I think when we come to maybe into this salvation experience, I think we base things on maybe how much we love him. Maybe base things on maybe that we didn't let him down, that we ain't done our part. And maybe there's no need of trying anymore. Maybe we get discouraged along the way because all we think about is how much we love him. And we know ourselves. The Bible says you know yourselves. And uh, I think that the greatest thing after your salvation in your Christian walk. If I had to tell you to make sure you get this base here done before you go anywhere else. Certainly before you go to the book of Revelations and maybe as some people would tell you and you'd find out about some four-headed beast that maybe would would not represent what Revelation is trying to teach you at all. And even as much as I love Romans that I think ought to be the first place that you go to that where you find out what your identity in Christ is. What a great place to go to. But even in going to that, you can miss to study God's word, to try to try to find them in your mind, how much God loves you. If you had spent your time trying to grab a hold of how much God really, really loves you. Scripture will tell us, and it's not where I'm going, that greater love had no man than this than a man that would lay down his life. For a friend. Scripture would tell us that. That even. He loved us while we was yet sinners. And the only reason why it's any different today. Is not because we've improved any. It's because he's improved. We really ain't made no improvement on our part. But. The improvement has been made on his part. Just a very short scripture, because I don't even know how to preach what I'm going to tell you. But God loves you. He, he loves you so much. He's going he's gonna to provide for you. The Bible talks about it rains on the just and the unjust. This morning, if you've got to share in a Sunday school lesson, if even if your class, as Brother Jason maybe is going through scriptures, I've allowed him to do that. He asked me, could he? But just to get lined up where everybody else is. This morning, it's been on, the lady's name was Hannah, wasn't it? And Hannah had married this man. But she was a handmaiden, I think. Am I saying it right? Huh? Yeah. Oh, but a wife, right? And this, this woman didn't have any rights whatsoever. That means she would love her husband. She would take care of her husband. She would meet all the, wa- all the needs just like a wife would meet. But the, at the end of the day, The children would have all the rights. They would own all the money. They would own all the cars. They would own all the houses. They would own it all. And at the part of his death, it would be like she never had a part in the whole thing. Now, as I was listening to Brother Al teach that lesson over there, just about to have a come apart, just welcoming people at the door. I got to thinking about how Jesus Christ, when he saved you, he He really married you. You was intertwined with him. I mean, the Bible says that when when he comes back, it's going to be like a. Say it. A bride adorned for his groom or something. A marriage that he's yoked up with you. And he's a God that's all knowing. The song says, when he was on the cross, I was on his mind. 
Now in our mind, we try, we try to think about, we even talked about some bargaining that goes on. How people are here this morning, maybe that they just hear because they think maybe God's going to bless them. But we need to be here because he loves us so much that it would absolutely make absolutely no sense not to be here. But God knows at the end of the day, he's going to receive probably nothing. Anything good, he's not going to receive any credit for it. Anything good, we're going to tend to give all the credit to something else. Well, these things, somebody just happened to call me. That just happened to happen. It was a coincidence in life. But what it really is that God loves you unconditionally. The song said he knew me, yet he loved me. When he was on the cross... I was on his mind. And then 1 John, we're going to read a scripture, 1 John chapter 4. And it's in 1 John 4, verse 19. When you get there, say, we made it. Wow. We love him. Comma. Because he first loved us. Do you understand that trying to understand as men, Brother Billy was talking early this morning. He's about the only one. He'll just keep picking on me. But what are you going to preach on, Brother Eddie? And I have to watch it because if I preach it, I got to get another word. It won't be a fresh word. But Ben, he just got a love for the church and love to do. He just keeps on gnawing at me. Where where are you going to come from? What's the thought for today? And he just keeps on gnawing. So I told him about this morning was going to be about God's love for us. And how that, and Billy said something about how we to love one another because the scriptures right up under is going to say that. But I told him, I said, Billy, see, When we understand how much he loves us, sharing that love with everyone else won't be any problem. For God so loved us, while we were yet sinners, he gave his life for us. Now, the only way that you can't be joyful, successful, and happy in life, even though it's full of trouble, right in the midst of your trouble... You can sing, I know the Lord's going to lead me out. Right in the midst of your trouble, you know that he's got a divine plan. And I love what, as me and Brother Sammy Back was talking in before the early service, we got fellowship some. He said, Brother Eddie, even those bad things that we come in our life are just to dial us in to how good God is. It's to bring us to a point because this life is not going to last long. Those people that we love, we're going to spend eternity with them if we can just get them the message that God wants to save them. Once we get that message done and we get all of our families saved, it don't make much sense to stay down here anyway. Paul says, I'd rather be at your Miss Body. Now, that's a Holy Ghost thing. You ain't got to hit me. I made up my mind after Wednesday. Diana told me I was mad. She said, you preach mad. I said, yeah, I did. But I just got to thinking about how blessed we was. I got to think about how many folks ain't having to go through what Christy and Chloe and Kaylee's going through. I got to think about that little baby on my phone that's in the old and that sent me a picture that's got leukemia that so many folks ain't got. Got to think about Amanda's going to have some surgery this week and that girl ain't but maybe 30-something years old maybe that may have to have a heart valve replaced. I got to talk, think about all the people being burned up with chemotherapy all week. 
And then I got to think about standing and preaching to some people. That ain't no way you can be saved without having the Spirit of God living inside. That but now we ought to done figured out that this is the Lord's house. David said, I was glad when they said, let us go into the house of the Lord. I got to thinking about after the question came about, I preached like a madman. I got to thinking about when Jesus went in his temple one day. Things wasn't just right. People wasn't worshiping. People wasn't praising. People was in there doing things they had no business doing. Do you think we do that today? What you done brought in here? No. You think on that day they might have had some pigeons in there. They may have had some doves in there. They may have made it like a flea market that day. They may have had some goats and some sheep in there. Look at, and it was visible where God could sit. Do, do you not know that God's looking down out of heaven and he knows what you done brought in here? I feel good this morning. He knows whether you done brought some thankfulness in here. At the same time, when you rattle your, your tongue, you try to decide whether some guy that's drinking a beer is going to make heaven. You try to decide whether somebody told you a lie. It's going to make heaven. You think about somebody living in adultery, whether they're going to make heaven. And you go all through them things that you think the sin that folks ain't going to make heaven. I come to tell you that when you get to the portals of glory, you better have a Holy Ghost of thankfulness in your soul because unthankfulness will not enter the portals of glory. I'm going to tell you one thing. God took care of it down here on this side. Remind me about that money changer one more time. God took care of it down on this side. He said, look here, he's all knowing. He knew he was going to marry up with your rotten self and me. He knew. But he knew at the end of the day you was going to forsake him. He knew you wasn't going to keep on going to church on Wednesday night. He knew you wasn't going to keep on going to church on, on, on Sunday night. He knew that on Sunday morning, sometimes you was going to come, but you didn't want to come. He all know that, but he looked through time and he loved you more than you loved yourself. If you never went to church another time, that's what I want you to understand. It ain't based on what you're doing. It never was based on what you was doing. Matter of fact, he said, I marvel that after I done saved you in the midst of your rotten self, he said, I marvel that all of a sudden you get to thinking by your righteousness, about something you done done right. Some you done went to thinking you done done good. That that makes you good with me. He said, no, the only reason why you righteous is because of my righteous. Because I don't know nothing but right. Man, I want to tell you something. If you could get your, your family ready to go to glory. I'm telling you, you'd be like Paul. You'd be saying, man, you say, how you doing today? So I got heaven on my mind. David, if all your family got right, little old Trent would go. He'd go to heaven. Look here, David Ross said he's saved by him. He'd go. Carla would go. Ginger would go. You'd go. Mama's already there. Look at life down here. Look at the scale is getting the tip a little bit. That eyes have never seen, ears never heard, neither head in our heart of man. What God has in store for those that love him, it said, but the spirit. It's done showed you a thing or two. My goodness, what a time. What a time we had last Thursday morning. How God was trying to reveal to us men their election, just how good he is. I come to tell you, if you've been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb and only you know that you have, you'll have to figure it out your own self. I will remind you that the Bible says many is going to come to me in that day. Many is going to say, Lord, Lord, hadn't I done all these things in your name? He said, apart from me, you work for iniquity before I never knew you. I want to tell you how much God loves you. I'm not being mean, I'm being sweet. It's a sweet preaching right here I'm doing. I come to tell you that God loves you. He loves you. You cannot measure 
His love. You, you cannot even come close to His love. And what's happened in your Christian life, if you've done that, you never took the time. You've always measured up what you're doing for Christ, and you ain't ever took the time to measure what Christ done already done for you. Ain't that something? He's already done decided you're going to get to walk on the streets of gold. He's already done decided when your body takes the last breath on this side. Heaven's going to kick in. There's a generator. Holy Ghost generator is going to kick in to be after Miss Body to be present with the Lord. The Holy Ghost shut down right there, son. It's going to breathe the breath of life like you ain't never seen before. Look here. You going to a place. He said, he that liveth and believeth in me, believeth I this, you shall never die. I come to tell you because... That scripture said, we love him. We worship him. We praise him. We adore him. We salute him. We give all allegiance to him. When we go through bad times, he's the one that we can call on him. He don't ever leave us nor forsake us no matter what we do. There was 10 lepers. They was lepers just like you and me. They were seeking deep in sin. They had sin all over them. That leprosy is a form of sin that the Bible's trying to tell you like we was. Ten of them. Maybe Billy Graham, what he's saying, 75 to 80 percent of the church for sure is lost. And on the way to hell, he said, I base that based on the people that come down to be saved in crusades. And there that man's a very, very old man. He said, all of them check the box. They come down, they say, I'm lost, and I'm on my way to hell. You done preached Jesus, him high and lifted up. You done told us about the blood today. You done told us about the cross. You done told us about an empty grave. And even though I got marked on that piece of paper that I'm a member somewhere, I ain't got peace down in my soul. I want to be saved. I want to have that peace that passes all understanding. He said at least 80% of the people that come down to be saved are a member just like you of a church house somewhere. What you need to do is you need to give your life to Jesus. And for the rest of your life, rather than you using your judgmental spirit. Huh? Ah. Have you ever not been in the Lord's house when you know you could have been there, you should have been there? Yeah. Then don't you look at somebody that's committing adultery because you don't rate God of that blessing he want to give you. You done raped God of being able to lay hands on Parker the other night when she needed prayer and you weren't here. You done raped God of not being able to pray for Billy when he was sick and you wasn't here. You done raped God of not being able to pray for Carly when she was sick and she needed you with prayers. You a doctor's generation. You know what the Bible says? We are when we do that. He said, you're a stiff neck people. I've been in churches. They were so stiff neck. They were so nosy, Brother Harris. They could spin their head all the way around sitting in church and never turn the body. I'm telling you they could. They knew everything that went around them and they never turned around. Karen, you know I'm telling the truth. If you spend all your time, we love him. Because he loves us. I come to tell you, I'm going to tell you an absolute truth. If you never participate in Parker's prayer again, if you've been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb, if you never go to church another Wednesday night, if you never, and I ain't trying to get folks to come on Wednesday night and Sunday night and Sunday morning, I'm just trying to let you know how much God loves you. If I can get that point across... (laughs) You'll be preaching to me next week why I didn't go to revive you on Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. <laughs> I remember a man coming into the shop one time. I ain't going to keep you long. I hope I ain't boring you. I was talking about this somebody. Maybe it was David and him the other day. This man come into a shop one day. And he was a man that was real excited about God. He didn't have much in life. He was excited. I heard he would wear a suit to church and wear tennis shoes. <laughs> He got really excited. He didn't want no shoes tying him down. He was trying to talk to us about God's blessing, Brother Donnie. Wasn't long. He looked me in the eye and the fellow with me. He said, look here, y'all just ain't got enough God on me for even talking to y'all. I might go somewhere else. I come to tell you that God loves you so much. 
Every problem you got, every care you got, every hurt you got, every trial you got coming to you, God has already done worked it out. God's already done put it right. I don't care how big a hurt you got. God's already done provided. Seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and he'll supply your every need according to his riches in glory. If you've been born again by the blood of the lamb, you got to work it out in your own spirit. You got to work it out with fear and trembling. You better work it out. Better not be because your mama said it. Better not be because your daddy said it. It better be because you got a peace inside of you. No matter what comes in life. If your brother don't like you no more. If your sister don't like you no more. If your mama and daddy don't like you no more. You know that you got a God that loves you unconditionally. You don't ever go to church. No Wednesday. No Sunday. And this is the last Sunday morning you're ever going to come to church. Matter of fact, the Bible says right above that, he's talking about, he just got through talking about them. Don't rejoice because you've got power over to do these things to them things. That was in another place I was going to talk. I was going to preach about the Good Samaritan. That's right after. It said, but rejoice because. That's what I told Billy I was going to preach on. That's why I can't preach on it because I done already preached a bit. He said, don't rejoice because you can do all them things. I about go plumb crazy hanging around folks that's trying to get a hold of something else but Jesus. They the most miserable, discouraged, religious folks. Oh, I got saved, brother Ed. I'm just trying to get to that. Well, this Jesus is that. <laughs> If this ain't that, I don't want none of it when it gets here. Because I'm going to tell you, he done provided my every need according to his riches and glory. He'll never leave me. He'll never forsake me. He's going to be my present help in the time of trouble. What a Jesus. Yeah, because I deserve it. Is that what you think? Because I love him so much. Are you kidding me? You kidding me? Cause I give so much. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Cause I witness so much. After that, that Holy Ghost comes. Cause I witness so much, brother Eddie. Huh? No. He loves you. He loved me because we love him because he first loved us. If it's any love in you, it ain't because you loved him first. It ain't because you done something for him first and he come and done something for you and now y'all just trying to outdo one another but maybe he gave me a little more. Let me go home. Let me calculate this thing up now. He did drive this far. I did drive that far. I did supply 14 two before over here. Let me tell you something. On this deal I'm talking to you about being saved, you ain't provided nothing and God kept right on loving you. Thank you, Jesus. My word, that Holy Ghost is preaching good this morning. What about them ten lepers? Maybe Billy Graham was right. Ten that Jesus himself told them, you've been healed. You've been healed of your leprosy. I'm talking about, look here, they got sores all over them, Brother David. They ain't never been able to go around nobody. They couldn't go to Walmart. Look at, they'd have to send some kind of, I don't know, smoke signals. I reckon, go to Walmart, bring me some Little Debbie cakes. You're saying you're crazy, man. They didn't have them back then. Oh, yeah, they had something. It's always been something. Huh? Now it's that iPhone. We can't get off of it. You can't sit down. Folks come in the restaurant, they're running over folks. You worry about folks running over you in the street, they'll run over you. Look at, they'll walk plumb out in front of you driving. Run over you. We got to get on it in the morning. We got to check everything out. That's always been a little Debbie. Yeah. What's your favorite? I love them. <laughs> them little chocolate, little Swiss ropes. Yeah. And some milk. Ooh. Oh, them nutty buddies. Huh. Ooh, I love them. Them little strawberry shortcake things. How do they do it? 
I mean, one pass, my truck, Brother Harris, I want a gas on it, thinking I can get inside of it some kind of way. I'd say, Lord, there's thousands on that thing. Yeah. Ten lepers. Couldn't go nowhere. Ten lepers. I'm going to tell you, wouldn't you think? Would you not think if you had leprosy, you could never come in a place like this? You can never go tell your kid nowhere. Matter of fact, if your children didn't have leprosy, you couldn't even be around your children. So it was ten of them. Jesus come upon them, and he healed all ten of them, didn't he? You've been healed. That means even though you look bad, even though you look bad, look here, don't worry about it. You ain't got to holler unclean no more. Where people get away from you. Look at, you can go anywhere you want to go. You just look bad. So just cover yourself up. Maybe where your eyes is done. You'll be okay. They won't see the sores. Look, 10 got healed. Who loved who? Who loved who? 10 went running off. One went to trotting down the road. He went to trotting of the cares of life. He went to trotting old poor pedal for me. Look at ten of them just running. Look at, we got to go, man. There's a whole lot out here to see. There's some buttercups. Look at, we can go look at them. There's a place we can go to. We can go to the Sioux. We can go to Niagara Falls. We can be around folks and we can see things that we ain't never seen. Oh, but I've seen one, Danny. Son, he stopped dead in his tracks. Them others run by him, just like they run a hundred miles an hour. And I don't see folks do it. Look at, I see very few. The Bible says few be that find it in the heart to come back and praise God and worship him for being so good. I'm preaching good. You ain't amen to me, but it's all right. I done got used to it. I done got used to it now. I'm not going to let it affect me. Cindy said you need to hear word. I'm giving you word. One stop dead in his tracks. He didn't stop in his tracks because he done been so good to Jesus. He didn't stop in his tracks because he earned to be cured from a leprosy. He didn't stop in his tracks because all he had gave and all the money and who it was because he was a certain denomination. He stopped in his tracks because God had been so good to him. Jesus, seen a man coming back. What question did he ask the man? Where is them nine? You won't find nowhere in the Bible, Brother Jason, where he went back and he gave them leprosy again. That's what we deserve. We're going to do God like that. We're just going to run off. We're not going to ever return to our first love. It won't ever be. Look at, I can mark it down. There's folks right here and there's folks that ain't here. They used to be fellow of this church. They won't never be like they once was. The Bible said, because the iniquity bound, the love of men is going to wax cold. They can't muster that kind of love no more. They can't muster that kind of feeling no more. And God then gave them over to it. They'll die. Some of them may live 20 more years and they'll dock these doors every now and then. They won't have a part of being a part of Parker's healing. And God won't take it away because God loves you so much. I come to tell you, he loves you so much. That one that come back to him. He said, where's the mother nine? I don't believe it says in there. Can't you imagine be there and your whole buddies? Ten of you. Y'all done lived in a little old colony. That's all the fellowship you had. Look at one another how ugly he was. You look at one another every day. He said, man, your ears going to fall off today. He said, man, your nose has got more rotten than it's ever been. Man, you think you're going to lose that finger right there? He said, I don't know. He said, oh, you look bad. He said, you look bad too. So you don't look as good as you did yesterday. It's getting worse and worse every day. That one come back. He said, where's the mother nine? Where's the mother nine to sit with you and talk about how bad it was that was running down the road where you was running. They was happy. Why didn't they turn around with you? Yeah. Boy, he looked at that one. Now, I'm going to tell you something. There's a whole lot of folks that say they're on the way to heaven, Brother Bobby. 
And they're just fine sitting in them stands and let everybody else do everything. Y'all go get them, boys. But when the hurt comes and when the trial comes, boy, they want God to be close to them. And you know something about God? He ain't like you and he ain't like me. You know where he's going to be? It's like in footprints in the sand. So, Lord, where was you at? I didn't see but one footprint. When I was going through that trial, Lord, where was you at? I said, I was there. So that was my footprints. I was carrying you. That one leper come back to him. I'm going to tell you something. God wants to make you whole. And here's what I think he wants to make you whole of today. He wants to make you whole. Of realizing how much he loves you. He wants to make you whole. And make you realize. How much he loves you. You know what? If you realize today how much he loves you. You're not going to wake up in the morning with anxiety. No. Sheltered in the arms of God. You ain't going to wake up in. I'm sorry. Boy I was watching Andy Griffin last night. Old Mayberry. Man, what can I watch? I found it where I could just watch several of them at one time. That woman come in there. I don't remember her name. But she ailed every day. She told folks she hurt. So that pain goes in here. Andy was saying, are you hurting? She said, oh yeah, it goes in here. It comes up this leg, goes down that leg, comes up my back, and it popped right out there. And she went to the drugstore. And the man's daughter done took over the drugstore. I'm going to quit. I'm preaching about Andy Griffin. I'm going to tie it back in here somewhere. And his daughter done took over the drugstore. She said, we got to do things right. And this little woman come out. She said, I got my dime and I want my pills. She said, well, my uncle run this store. And I know you've been getting your pills, but you've got to have a prescription to be able to get your pills now. She said, I got my dime. The woman was thinking, what in the world could he have gave you for a dime anyway? <laughs> she said, I'm sorry, we got to lay down some rules. You bring me a prescription and I'll get you your pills. So that woman went to complain to Andy Griffin. She said, Andy, you got to go down and arrest that woman. Arrest her for murder. <laughs> he said, for murder? Yep, because she ain't giving my pills and I'm going to die. And she's going to be a murderer. So he goes over to the drugstore. He talks to the woman. And he said she come in here to get her pills. And he was talking to her. And all of a sudden they seen that woman with that little hat. And she had a little feather sticking out. And it was behind the counter. And she was going to steal them pills. Or maybe lay the dime and get the pills. Well the girl that's the niece caught her. And she then said I. I ain't never coming to this drugstore again. Well, all the community. I know you don't like this, but you didn't like when I was preaching on Jesus anyway. Come on now, Eddie. Eddie, don't be this way. Listen to me. You ought to watch more Andy, Andy Griffin. I ain't saying nothing. I ain't saying it. The community then got to feeling sorry for the woman. They know she's just carrying on. You ever seen a church? Brother Harris said go over and baby on somebody. No, they just lying. Come on, Pastor. You know, can't get a job knowing they can get a job well as anybody. Yeah. Boy, they want to talk about folks done loving them. We got them right here. Yeah. Boy, it's pretty hard after somebody done been faithful to the church, Brother Harris. You got to sit around and you know how somebody's running them down when they done loved them when they didn't deserve it. Boy, it's pretty hard not to go to them. It's like, you ain't going to do that to them no more. I about done had enough of that. You know what I'm talking about? Let me finish this story, Danny. It was good. Look here. That, whole, that woman was dying. Said she's home dying. And she said she's home dying. And it went over and everybody went and brought her soup. And she had a big old turkey leg in her, in her hand laying on the couch. She's eating that turkey leg up under a blanket. He said, how are you doing? She said, I'm just laying here dying. Just my last meal, you know, laying here dying. Somebody rung the doorbell said, I hope I ate some more soup. And here comes that girl, that niece that owns that drugstore. Had some soup, of course. And she set it down. She said, oh, you got me some more soup. I don't want no more soup. 
Oh, what are you doing over here? She said, well, and she opened them little pills. that wasn't nothing but some sugar pills to start with. <laughs> she told Andy later, but any, she, she said, I come to bring you medicine. She had her glass of water and she put it in her mouth and she gave her water. And the woman was healed miraculously over that syrup sugar pill. Immediately. And Andy said, that show is a sweet thing that you done done. She said, well, the whole community was down on me because I wasn't giving that woman what she needed. And I knew I needed to come over here. I'd probably go out of business. He said, that's still a sweet thing you done. She said, well, let me just be honest with you. Said that pill. So I wondered why. My uncle could sell them pills for a dime. They ain't nothing but old sugar pill anyway. <laughs> but if that's going to make her feel better and everybody's going to get along better, then that's going to be the way it is. And so Andy just won't t- teach her a lesson. I got to let you go. Andy's going to teach her a lesson. No, he was talking to her about that. Sometimes you just have to take the, the situation in the scope of the situation, what's going on. Yeah. And, and, you know, what's right and wrong. Ain't got to do with it. Well, he didn't know that that was her car parked in front of the fire plug. And he said, oh, somebody done parked right here. I got to give them a ticket. And that woman went to giving Andy his own medicine. <laughs> sometimes, said Brother Harris, she said, sometimes, see, rather than write a ticket, you need to look at the whole scope of what's going on. Sometimes you don't do the right thing or the wrong thing. You just, Billy Wayne said, you just got to look at the scope of all that's going on. And she didn't put it on Andy. Look here. And Andy flipped his pad back and said, you right. And she said, thank you. Have a good day. And she got in that car and drove off. And Andy said, huh, she done got to me again. <laughs> now let me bring it back in here. That thing that you think is going to bring peace to you, <clears throat> it ain't going to last. Come on, Pastor. It ain't no more than a sugar pill. But I tell you, the Bible says, and I'm preaching to you because I prayed about what to preach. The Lord didn't give me a word this morning. When you get to the place, you want to understand how much God loves you. Brother Larry, we was in the class a while ago. Brother Jason, go so I'll. If you don't go to the piano, I won't never quit. Thank you, Brother Jason. This morning, we was in Brother Al's Sunday school class. If you ain't got a good Sunday school class, go back to that corner right there. I'm going to tell you something else about him. He's faithful. And we went to talking about how that we don't do God right and how that we wake up some Sunday mornings come to church and then we ain't ready to worship. We ain't ready to be thankful. And I, I said, Brother Larry, ain't God done took care of us? Ain't we done arrived on Sunday morning, Brother Al, over and over and over on Sunday morning? That's right. Has there ever been a Sunday morning that God ain't took care of you? That's right. I said, how long have you been saved? And you told me, 13 years. And we went saying 13 years. How many Sundays in 13 years? And we come up just around it off at 800 Sunday mornings. 800 read Sunday mornings. Since Larry Fitz gave his life to Jesus, he's come to the Lord's house. And God has already provided everything that he ever needed. I'm going to tell you one thing. It's been some storms in them Sunday mornings. Ain't it, Renee? Hey, man, we've gotten down on our knees just like every y'all. So we've called out and cried. That's right. Man, we've had times right here where, look, if something don't change, it's the end of the world. <laughs> but God. But God. Just because he's God. Yeah. Man, if we can just get this. If we can just read, if it's me and you, if we can just get this new horse. Boy, after we done went to that first show or two and everybody done seen it do its deal, we can't show them that first time no more. They done seen it. Little party about is over. We done find out it's got some little old deals it's going to go off on the wrong end too. We done find out it's got problems just like the last one had. Huh? Get that new vehicle. Boy, we love it. And all of a sudden, brand new. I brought one brand new one time. Brand new home and a diaphragm, something busted in my driveway. I was going to show it to Mr. Bill. He come down and said, son, you ain't got much. There's diesel running everywhere. <laughs> the truck that I had three trucks ago, Brother Harris, I sold it to Mr. Robert Campbell. It was a brown and tan truck. If that truck didn't blow through, they're going about 80 miles an hour. Here I'm sitting with a brand new one, and it ain't even running. What I'm telling you, God's already supplied you what you need. 
You just ain't got to hold that love yet. You ain't got to hold that love yet. He's wanting to love you. He does love you. He loves you unconditionally. He loves you unconditionally. You know what he's wanting to do? He's wanting to do what nobody else can do. Somebody else can make you feel better for a while. Somebody else can partly put you in good shape, make some kind of feel something. Pops can do that. But can't nobody do what he did for that one leper that come back to him. That one leper had come back to him. He had already done cleansed him of his leprosy, Brother David. Wasn't going to have leprosy no more. It was gone. But the evidence of it was still there. Boy, I see Jesus now. He said, because you've come back, I'm going to make you whole. You know what that meant? That means he, he had a good ear on both sides. That's right. All them sores. Bobby, that man comes to our Bible study. He's got some things on his head. I love him. He, he let me say this. Some balls on top of his head. Ain't, ain't it, Bobby? Sometimes those things are maybe oozing a little bit. He comes in, he sits at that last table back there. But ain't nobody sitting at that table. I'll make sure I go back there and sit with him. Other night, I went to revive on his church. You know where the man with balls was sitting? He wasn't sitting on the back row. He wasn't sitting in the middle. Look at, he was sitting on the front row. You know who I got to worship with? I got to worship with the man with balls on his head. You know the one who welcomed me more than anybody in the house? The man with balls on his head. That one had come back. Not only he didn't have the disease no more, but he didn't even look like it. Look here. Not only, David, we ain't got no sin no more. It's been buried as far as the east from the west. But when the Father looks through the blood, it ain't even going to be no balls on there no more. Look at He's looking through the blood. He's looking down from heaven. He don't see no sin. When the world says, yeah, he messed up last Thursday. Yeah, he lost his temper last Tuesday. The Father up above is looking down in love. Call. He said, I don't see no sin. Woo, that's too good a preaching. That's too good a preaching. No greater love than that. Not only he don't see no sin, but look here. Let me tell you one more time before I turn you loose, Brother Danny. He loves you. Woo! I'm telling you, he loves you. Don't you be worrying about what I need to do for the Lord. You get real concerned what the Lord can do for you. We're going to go. Boy, if I had it going on, if I conducted myself every day like I really ought to, I didn't ever have no bad thoughts, I probably wouldn't preach like this. If I was as saved as y'all was, I probably wouldn't preach this way. But I'm knowing within myself, if it wasn't for the grace of God, if it wasn't because he loved me so much, I'm going to tell you, I love him. Because he loves me. I said I love him because he loves me. I said I love him because he loves me. I love him because I know he loves me. He didn't give you no healthy baby, Brother David Blurton, because you deserved it. He gave you one because he loves you. Brother Johnny, he didn't give you them two children because you deserve it. He did it because he loved you. Brother Donnie, he didn't heal that heart condition because you loved him. He did it because he loved you. I ain't going to tell what I told you at that breakfast, Brother Johnny. One of these days where you're a brother, one of these days when we knew him, Brother Jason, Maybe y'all got this position. They'll treat you the same way. You hear me? They'll be close to you too. Jesus loves you, Carl. And that ain't based on nothing you're going to ever do. There's a lot of preachers who wouldn't tell you that for nothing. They try to whoop you down, beat you down, make you come back tonight. Out of guilt, you're going to come back and say, we have to, we'll just do whatever we got. To. You ain't got to do nothing. It ain't going to change his love, buddy. Ain't it something? 
Boy, that's what ought to constrain us. I'm going to quit. Becky, Ed, I don't care what doctors say. You let me know when you're going to Vanderbilt. There's a name that by that name Come on. that every demon Come on. we can put him on the ground. Amen. That hurt you got that trial you're going through, that void you got, there's a name that'll put it on the ground. There's a name, Brother Larry. Can I preach a little bit? I'll make it just melt at your feet. Look there too many times. Y'all done went through things. Had your mind. You thought you had to win. Then it come a day and said, man, I got to let it go. Boy, then God just come in there and just rush in there. 